the PTRD-41. This was an important firearm for the Soviet army during World War II, and it was used in significant numbers. Russian cinema pays noteworthy tribute to this weapon, and the soldiers who used it in the dangerous anti-tank role. The PTRD-41 shows up in dozens of Soviet movies, where in many cases anti-tank riflemen play central roles. So let's take a look at this prolific weapon of World War II, and a few of the many movies it's been featured in. The PTRD entered Soviet production in the second year of World War II. It would be produced from 1941 to 1945, and over 450,000 were made, making it the most produced anti-tank rifle of its kind. It was a single-shot weapon that fired an armor-piercing 14.5 by 114 mm round, not an explosive round as sometimes shown. Despite anti-tank rifles not being overly favored by other nations during World War II, Russia went all in with this rifle as a primary infantry anti-tank weapon, adopting tactics to make up for the shortcomings of anti-tank rifles, which generally were unable to penetrate the armor of late war tanks. At the start of World War II, most armies were in fact using anti-tank rifles but they're an uncommon thing to see in any Western war movies, as they were quick to be replaced. You can catch a Lati L-39 anti-tank rifle in the excellent Finnish war movie Unknown Soldier, being used against a Soviet T-34 with limited success. The British and Commonwealth nations also used the Boys anti-tank rifle at the start of the war, but quickly abandoned it in favor of the Piat, an anti-tank weapon, which used a more effective shaped charge warhead. Bring up the Piat! Make sure it's within range. Russia, before joining the Allies, invaded eastern Poland in 1939, where they captured hundreds of Polish Model 35 anti-tank rifles, a rare thing to see on film, but featured in a few video games. These anti-tank rifles were reasonably effective at the start of the war, and even the German army was having success with their Panzerbusch 38 and 39 anti-tank rifles, also a rare thing to see on film. The Soviet army liked these weapons, and copied features from both the Polish Model 35 and the Panzerbusch 38 when developing the PTRD-41. Ironically, Germany stopped producing anti-tank rifles in the same year the PTRD-41 began production. Germany, like Britain and America, would end up favoring anti-tank weapons with hollow-shaped warheads, like the Panzer Schreck and Panzer Faust. After Germany invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, the PTRD and its semi-automatic cousin the PTRS-41 were the only significant individual anti-tank weapons available to combat German armor, and they weren't available in significant quantities until 1942. However, the PTRD's armor-piercing round was fantastic for an anti-tank rifle, and could penetrate up to 30 millimeters of armor at 500 meters, and 40 millimeters of armor at 100 meters. They were very capable against German armored vehicles, such as half-tracks, and early war German tanks up to the Panzer IV, which had vulnerable side armor. The PTRS-41 used the same large round as the PTRD, but was semi-automatic as opposed to the single-shot PTRD. The PTRS is considered more advanced a rifle, and like the PTRD, is still in use today by some militias. The PTRS-41, however, was more expensive to produce, and less reliable, hence why so rarely shown on film outside of animation. Soviet cinema often favors the PTRD, as did the army. As other armies used anti-tank rifles in the secondary roles, deeming them inefficient, the Soviet army doubled down on their use, issuing them in great numbers amongst its infantry. Though this weapon needed to be used at close range for best effect, German tanks often found themselves under fire from multiple PDRDs. These weapons were significantly faster to fire than other anti-tank weapons, and could be maneuvered relatively quickly. Soviet anti-tank riflemen, usually in pairs of two, learnt the vulnerable targets on German tanks, the tracks, machine gun ports, and armored glass. The devastating effect of such a shot is well shown in the film Pamphilov's 28 Men.
For those doubting the effect of anti-tank rifles, the German army was so concerned by the PTRD that significant manufacturing in steel was used to combat these weapons. The spaced armor you see on German tanks, known as Schürzen, was in fact installed just to combat these anti-tank rifles. They did indeed also help protect against other anti-tank weapons during the war, but their original intention was to tumble, deform and deflect the solid bullets fired from the PTRD. In Russian cinema, there are a significant number of movies that dedicate screen time to anti-tank riflemen. The majority of all Soviet-era movies are certainly propaganda films, but there are still many worth watching, and even some with strong anti-war messages, likely even more relevant today than when produced. The majority of these films can be watched in full on YouTube. Слушай, Хабанера, у тебя патефон когда-нибудь был? Какой патефон? У меня тоже не было. Жалко, правда? Хватай ружья и мотай сюда. На! They Fought for Their Country from 1975 is an excellent, largely anti-war film with sizable set-piece battles, which, like most Soviet war films, feature mock-up Tiger tanks operating on T-54 tank chassis. What stands out most in this film are the relatable experiences of the soldiers who share in common harsh realities of protracted war without any glory. Even scenes such as the constant complaining about carrying kit as heavy as the PTRD give the movie a personal feel. The PTRD weighed 17.3 kilograms, or just over 38 pounds. It was about two meters long, or six and a half feet, with no way of breaking down for transport. One, two soldiers were going from 1977. Despite having some noteworthy battle scenes featuring the PTRD, it does little to glorify war. In fact, the movie jumps in time to highlight the survivors dealing with the tragic aftermath of war. The characters are believable and portrayed as regular people beyond any national symbols of bravery. Значит так, если тут начнется какая-нибудь заварушка, ну что-нибудь вроде войны, понятно? Для вас что главное? Что? Не заснуть. Panfilov's 28 Men from 2016 would be the most recent film to highlight the PTRD, with the PTRD team stealing virtually every action shot in the movie, and there are many. The film really highlights not only how deadly the PTRD was to early and mid-war tanks, like the Panzer 3s and 4s, but also how risky it was being an anti-tank gunner. Ultimately, anti-tank rifles struggled to keep pace with the increased armor thickness of late war tanks. The PTRD, however, greatly helped the Soviet Union fight off German armor early in mid-war. It was one of the best anti-tank rifles of World War II, and most importantly, it was cheap and easy to produce, being sent from the design table to the front lines, faster than almost any weapon in history. <sighs> Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on the PTRD-41. I want to remind everyone that YouTube is often a good source for amateur information. Most of us are not professionals in the field, so always double check your history. And if you're an expert, leave some info in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video.